All right. We'll go ahead and get the uh, Newbie Tuesday webinar started. We're a little late today due to a technical issue with uh, GoToWebinar. Don't you just love technical issues? In either case, we are recording this. We always record it, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Some of the participants have left, but it looks like we still have a few stragglers that uh, did not want to give up on me, and thank you so much for sticking around. We're going to be going over templates. Uh, initially, and then we'll also open it up for a few question and answers um, at the end. This past week, I have gotten, I'm not sure how many questions about template things that they were dealing with, and um, I, I just want to go back over some of these things and make sure that it makes sense, make sure that you guys are um, understanding the process of uh, how to use templates. So exactly what is a template? Uh, a template is a pre-designed, pre-laid out email or SMS text message or some message of some sort. Um, in most cases, it's an email. And inside that template, you normally have certain merge fields that are from the database so that whenever you go to send this template, send this email or send it as a text message of some sort, the, that the merge fields get filled in so that you can use this template over and over and over again uh, to help simplify what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So to get started, I'm going to go over some, some very basics. Number one, on the left-hand side, whenever you first come into uh, the templates area by clicking on templates at the top, you'll see a list on the left-hand side of all of your templates that you may have in the system. Now, uh, you have the option of searching those templates, so you can look for uh, certain keywords, say new, uh, new listing, and it'll find anything that has the word new listing in it. Uh, if you search for other words, those will be in there. So just a quick way of searching those. If you want to create a new template, uh, clicking on, obviously, the button says new template, and it's going to give you two options. One option is, the option is to give your... Uh, your system a new template where you author it yourself, you create it yourself. The other option is to use a template from our library. And we're not really going to go through the library piece itself right now, but realize that there are libraries of letters, libraries of workflows, and you can download those. Some of them are free of charge, some of them they do charge uh, some, some fee, but you have pre-designed uh, letters and templates and stuff that you can use. So anytime you want to start a new one, you can just click on Author New Template. Right below the new template, we've got some filter items. And the filter items are kind of divided into two different sections. The first five deal with the type of template it is. Is it an email template as far as the courier? Whenever you're, you're sending via, if you look over here on the right-hand side, any of these templates, if you click on them, this one just happens to be a uh, seven-year series uh, Dave Beeson letter that goes out or email that goes out and it's sent via email. So if I wanted to see all of my templates that were supposed to be sent by email, I can click on the little email icon. You'll see that it's a little darker than the rest and it will uh, bring up just those templates that deal with, with emails. If I click on it again, it turns it back gray and whenever it's gray, it's, it's not filtering by just that. In this case, every one of them is gray, so it actually shows everything. I'm going to click on SMS uh, Courier on this case and see, yeah, we've only got one template in this that is for SMS. So whenever I click on it, I can see that I've got certain merge fields and stuff that are available for that template for an SMS text message. But you'll see that it's just, um, just text messages. So the same type of thing for Facebook, for Twitter, for LinkedIn. You can limit what you see on the left-hand side um, by its how you're going to send it by the first five. The next three icons, I'm going to turn off the SMS so everything shows again. The next three indicate the, how you're going to use this template. Is it uh, on the use with section, is it set for contacts? Is it set for properties? Or is it set for transactions? So... If I wanted to see all my templates that deal with properties, 
I can click on the little property and then everything that is a property type template um, will show in the list. So that's fairly simple. The question comes up is why do we divide them by the three different types? Um, and let me go over that. What you'll find is we have the merge fields that are available within the system. And I'm just going to go to the first one in my list here. We've got like greeting. We've got uh, lots of other merge fields that are available. If you're going to send something to a person uh, within, the, within the system, you're going to want to use, typically you're going to want to use contact type templates. And that's, that would be useful for like leads. When it, when, if, you get, if you've got a lead generation website of some sort, or they register on your site, and it automatically fills Realvolve with your leads in your database, and you maybe put them on a lead generation workflow of some sort. Every day or every other day or however often you have that workflow set up, it will send an email to that person to, uh, to send them information of some sort. Anytime you're dealing strictly with a contact, you're going to want to use a contact template. So the use with would be contact. If, on the other hand, you're going to do something where you're going to be sending information to your, anybody that's in the people tab of a property, you're going to have access to those types of fields, plus any property type information. So if I deal with a particular property, here's a, a thank you to the seller. So in this case, we're going to send uh, thank you for listing the property at, and then it gives a merge field here for the property address. If I was trying to send this particular template to a contact, strictly a contact, without knowing the property, it wouldn't make sense to use this merge field. And that's why we have this use with set up so that the premise of the actual template needs to be decided ahead of time. Am I going to send this primarily to people that have no correlation to property or transaction? Am I going to send it to only those people that have something to do with the property um, or somebody that has something to do with the transaction. So making sure that you select the correct use with on a template is important. And then once they are selected, you have that ability to do all the filtering. So that's really why we have that use with. It really helps limit who's going to get it and which merge fields are allowed to be used within that, that list because you might accidentally, without knowing what you're doing, you might use a property merge field in a transaction that has no, some of that information is not known. And that's just important for you to, to know it ahead of time. Let's just, uh, let's just start a new template. I'm going to go ahead and say author new template. And we're going to create. And we're going to create a, um, a, a thank you letter of some sort for registering to their website. So in this particular case, I'm going to say, um, thank you for registering. Say, for instance, you had a lead generation website and you want to send this to the, the person, in this case, the contact that you're going to um, uh, email this to. Uh, we are setting it up to send via email. By default, that's what it is. And you can ass assign tags to a template that just allows you to search by certain keywords or those tags to be able to pull them up in the list over here. Nothing magical at all about those other than just searching purposes. What do we want to have as the uh, the subject? Now you can put in just a a very generic subject. Thank you for registering. However, that's a little bit boring. So what what I would recommend that you do is anytime that you're going to do anything with uh, people and you want it to be a little bit more uh, personalized, we're going to insert a merge field. And you can insert a merge field in the subject as well as in the body of the template. So I'm going to put in a merge field by starting by pressing two square brackets. And whenever I do those two square brackets, it brings me up a list of merge fields that are currently available for whatever use with type that I've got selected, in this case, contact. Um, and then I could pick and choose from this list if I wanted to. Or I can continue typing and knowing that I'm looking for a specific merge field. In, in this case, I might want the greeting field. 
and I'm just going to start typing greeting. And as I type each letter, it starts narrowing down the fields that are available based off of what I'm searching for. So I'm just going to click on greeting. So in this case, the greeting field, for those that, that aren't aware of it, is basically the first name of the person in most cases. If it is a husband-wife couple where they are married or there's a, a, a cohabitation of some sort, there is a greeting field available in the relationship status area. And typically it would have the first name of each person. So John and Mary. John and Mary, um, just a quick greeting and thanks for registering. Okay. So nothing major there. Just understand that this merge field will have the information filled in whenever we go to um, go to send this as an email in the subject field. So now the body. Um, I'm going to do a couple different things here. First off, we can, again, I'm going to put in another uh, merge field, and I might put in uh, a date field. I can just type in date, and it's going to give me a list of all the different dates that are available. In this case, I want to use the current date. I, mean, I could have typed in current date, but it found any, because I typed in the word date, it found any merge field that had the word date in it. So just a, a quick and easy way to uh, select that. So you can put in a date in there. Um, dear, and then we're going to put in the, uh, the greeting field again. Dear John and Mary, or Dear John, whatever's in there. Um, thank you for uh, visiting our website and if you had a if, if you knew that this was specifically coming from a specific website you could put that in all the time uh, one thing that you can do is use certain uh, merge fields so you might put in here that uh, I, I want to put in a web address of some sort of website and I could say the current users website and that comes from uh, the the account information in there. So if I have put in a website in there, I know that it can, this particular letter is coming from there, I can do that. If at any point, by using merge fields like this, and, and why we would use this as opposed to just putting in the actual website itself, would be if you are possibly going to change websites at time, by using a merge field like this, you can simply change it in one spot in the system under the settings area and it be available the next time without having to come back and change this template all the time. So that's important. Any time that you can use a merge field for something that potentially down the road could change, you're better off. One of the things that we uh, typically do at the bottom is we put some signature of yours of some sort. Well, instead of typing in that signature, in my case, I might put in mark at realvolve.com and, and put in all the website and phone numbers and all that kind of stuff. Instead of doing that, we can come down here and use the uh, signature merge field. And I'll show how that is, is put in there as well. But realize that those merge fields are there to help you help you to be more productive by using fields in the database, in this case the greeting field and, and other things that we might use, um, or by, um, by using fields that we might change down the road. Um, another thing that we get asked about is inserting images and how's the best way to insert those images. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just take this off and we're going to come up here and uh, we're going to insert a house image. We're going to click on the little image, and we're going to say we're going to choose it from a file. Now, choosing it from a file is going to pull it off of your uh, computer of some sort, so you can go to a specific place, select that image, and uh, put it into the system, and it will slap it in there. No big deal there. But what some people want to do is they want to put text around it or whatever. So what you can do is click on the image itself. Of course, it has a little handle here, so you can enlarge it, you can shrink it, you can make it whatever size you want there. Um, but you can also, whenever you click on it, you'll see that there's an edit button. By clicking on that edit button, it brings up an option so that you can um, add a title to it if you want to, or add a link to it if it's a link that you want them to click on and go somewhere. You can add that link and open it up in a new tab, open it up in a new browser tab. 
um, you can select that. Um, but you can also specify its position. So by having the none option in position, that basically means any text that I enter above it or below it will be above or below it. It doesn't have any position uh, with text around it. But if I wanted to put this image on the left-hand side and wrap text around it, I can put on left for its position, the, the position of the image, and click on save. So at that point, any text that was below it uh, gets moved up. And what we can do is kind of go through there and, and make sure it looks the way we want. We can add more verbiage uh, to this if we want and uh, um, put in whatever you want. So I'm just going to put in some basic garbage here just so that you can see that it does wrap that text around as you go on. Now what happens then is whenever they view this, this email, uh, no matter what size their screen, it will wrap that text uh, to, that, to that image and go all the way to the right hand side of whatever that image is uh, or that, uh, that boundary is on the right hand margin. So that's available to you to do that. Um, there are times, however, that you want to use, instead of a, an image that uh, you got on your hard drive, you might want to pull one off of a website of some sort. And by, by going to a website, and I, what I just did is I just went to, real quick, did a search for um, house image, and that's the one that we're actually currently using. Let me go to a different one just so that we've got a, a different image here. Um, I can take this image. I can right-click on it say, uh, copy the image URL. So by copying that image URL, I've got it on my clipboard, and say I want to insert an image. Um, I can come over here to the link option. I can put in and paste that link uh, URL into the system and then click on insert. And then there it puts it in. Now what this does is this, instead of embedding that image into the email, it embeds the URL and pulls that image from the website whenever it, it actually is received by the, the person. And to do that, Say, for instance, we've got an image that we do have on our site. If we come over here and we choose Choose, uh, you can pick an image of some sort. Uh, let me just pick this uh, motorcycle rider here and um, have it in the list. And again, I have the same options to be able to resize it however I want. I've got the ability to uh, go in and change its position. All that stuff's still available. Uh, the last thing that... that we need to cover on the images is the ability to delete the image. So if, if for some reason you've added it, you decide you don't want it, you can edit and then click on delete and it'll remove it. So that's all that. The other abilities to adding, if you're setting up, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete this image as well just so that it's, it's off there a little bit cleaner. If you're creating some kind of template that you're going to send out information with it, a, an attachment of some sort, we've got the little attachment to insert a file. We click on the insert file and we can do the same type of thing by either uploading or choosing a file that already exists. If I click on choose, I can you know click a, a closing document of some sort. I can um, pick one from my from my hard drive and and upload it as well. by by attaching that image or document or whatever it is, um, it'll list it on this, on this template, but it stores it with the template. So anytime you send this template out, it will uh, be available for the person to have access as an attachment as well. So those are the, the biggest questions that we get. Obviously, we've got the ability to go in there and change colors and sizes and fonts and that. That's pretty much all typical stuff. So I'm not really going to go over that, but you know, indents and stuff is all available. We do have the ability to, to put in tables and, and link other things. If, if you wanted to set up a, a URL link, those are certainly available. But if you wanted to send this as an email to somebody, and I've got just a, a sample one here, John Smith, with, with my Gmail account. Uh, I'm going to click on Send an Email. And I can put in whatever information that I want to in there um, as far as my subject and and 
and uh, message if I wanted to I could just start a new message but if I really want to use a template instead um, I can put in um, some keywords like reg in this case thank you for registering and what it does is it will load that template you'll also notice that it'll load the subject that goes along with it so in this particular case I'm using the thank you for registering and I'm gonna send this send this out now I do have the opportunity uh, to click on the preview if everything is is right there it's got an email address um, I can click on preview and it'll give you a little preview in this case the subject what the subject will look like John uh, just a quick greeting and then dear John's in there's the merge field you'll also see that on the website it merged in the website and if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom where I had that signature um, it went ahead and filled in the signature as well so just real quickly by by having those templates if somebody if, if this is an email that I send out a lot I can bring it down to just basically two clicks uh, clicking on the mail clicking on the the template selection that I want and then I can click on send the email and then boom it goes out to that person so that's just an easy way of using templates and and how to use it all right well that makes this is a, a quick 30 minute training just on the templates if you guys come up with any other questions later uh, certainly give me a, send me an email mark at realbob.com I'd be happy to answer that or visit our Facebook community we're getting lots and lots of uh, questions um, on that Facebook community and I hope that's a helpful resource for you or you can also go to help dot realvolve dot com and ask your questions there so hope you guys have a great newbie Tuesday and we'll see you next